Hey Motorized Bike Family, this is Tony here from BikeBerry. Today what we're going to do is we're going to focus on carburetor. Now we're going to start out with the NT carburetor, even though, even though that it comes with the high performance carburetor. We've all messed with these so much, we know how to tune them, we know how to adjust them. It's a good one to start out with before you jump into anything more high performance. I like to start out basic, get it running real good then move on to high performance parts. So in this episode, what we're going to focus on is getting this set up properly before you start your engine. And then we're going to mess with the clutch and get it all started out properly. Also, let's do this. And I want to send a special reminder to please like and subscribe and go join our Facebook group. All kinds of cool people are helping each other in there. But to those of you who watch all the way to the end of the video, we got a special surprise for you. So keep watching. One thing that was really beneficial and helpful to me was our Facebook group. When I first built my bike and I didn't know anything about it, I'm like, all right, does this carburetor sound good, right? I got so much good advice in there. Everybody helped me to really understand on how to set this up and what to do to get it at the point where you could start out knowing that it's going to work probably better than it did just coming from the factory, okay? Uh, you know, they put everything in together in the factory kind of at default settings, you know, the most wide open <laughs> everything. We need to go ahead and tighten up those parameters. So one thing that I like to use is a piece of this headliner fabric. You get it at the, you know, any fabric store, but it's foam on one side and fabric on the other. Because then as you take this apart and pull the clips off of it and stuff and realign everything, you don't lose nothing. It doesn't bounce off and, you know, hit the floor. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull it off here because we need to change. See that? So we'll pull the whole assembly out. Okay. There you go. We're going to take this pin out. There we go. Pull this off. You could see on the clip here, this it's at the second line up. There's a bottom one there and there's one up. We want to move it up one more. Double check that it's three lines up. Yep, three lines up. So I moved it up. If you notice on this washer, it's round in the center of it, but it's kind of slotted here and tighter. So it actually won't go on this way. It has to go on from the top like that. So this is our cable for our throttle, which is gonna run through here and connect it to that which goes into here. Take this little rubber boot off. I'm gonna take the small end. I'm gonna work it around into the cable and slide it up there. Take some pressure. This keeps dirt and junk out of your throttle cable. You get it up there, kind of out of your way, like that. Gotta pull some cable out. And push it through there like that, okay? And then this will grip it and keep it stuck on there. I would screw it. We'll screw it all the way down to start with just to get everything tight. Okay, like that. All right, so you got a few parts to put together here, but none of it's really that difficult. So you can see this slot here. That's where this slot right here. That's where your cable's gonna go through. So we wanna slide this in there like that leave that slot exposed okay then we're going to take this spring and put on here like that then we got to compress this spring so this is where you got to kind of hold everything all at once okay let's get a, that there slide it up into it see how it did that and then the spring goes together Okay, so all that assemblies together, then you're gonna take this end, and you're gonna pull it all together. So it's 
all held. So I'm holding this one in my right hand and all the assembly here is together. Okay. Then if you look down inside of here, there's a brass pin. That's where this slot moves up and down in. So you gotta rotate this the correct direction, okay? Just like that. So you can set that down. You can start to fasten this down, tighten it up. And if you look in there, I won't get some light in there for you. See, I'm pulling it. That's what opens it up. So now that you can see we have our throttle cable attached to our carburetor, next what we're going to do is we're going to set our idle adjustment screw just right. So you're trying to find a balance between your idle adjustment screw and then your throttle opening, okay? That's the balance that we're trying to get. And so what we're doing is we're just kind of putting it at a neutral position so that the engine doesn't four stroke, which is basically like, -da 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 -da, you know, and you'll, we'll, you'll see that it'll, it'll probably do it <laughs> a little bit when we start, but this will cut out the chances drastically. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the idle adjustment screw all the way out. Okay. So hold it in your hand. Okay. Then we're going to put it back in and we're going to screw it in 10 to 11 times. So what we'll do is we'll go one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That should be a good middle of the road, run pretty good starting point. Next thing I like to do is take off the cover. Okay, and just what we're gonna do is we're just inspecting it. Just make sure it's good, right? Make sure everything works, it's all tight, okay? And then we'll take out the screen here and the filter, okay? we want maximum amount of airflow into this. I actually run mine wide open. I don't have anything on mine. There you go. Last thing, check your screws on the bowl. Just cause, just cause you can. So we're almost ready to mount the carburetor to the engine, but let's get the throttle mounted first. That way we got some freedom of movement. You'll see. Just like the rear sprocket adapter, uh, you know, upgrading your chain tensioner, things like that, I also recommend just go ahead and upgrade your throttle grip right away too. So I opt for this aluminum type. I'll put the link below in there. It's... Uh, I just feel like it's a better option. You can grease it better. It's not going to bend and all that. I've had really good luck with them. So I just mount this thing on there as a kill switch by itself. I get rid of that. I go all in on this. So you just got to pull the two halves apart. You can see you got a lot of options here, right? So what we'll do is we'll first thread this on. It's kind of tight. So what I'll do is open up. So let's try the middle one. Just barely opening it up, okay? Then we'll go into the middle one. Yeah, that's a lot better. Now let's see how it feels okay so I'm you can see that right there the end of it I put it on top of that screw in there that's stopping and now our cable is tight so there's no play 
There's no play in our cable at all because I chose the middle opening, okay? So that my carburetor isn't just dangling on the ground, whatever, while I'm working on all this, I'm trying to mount the throttle grip. I roll it up like this and I take that whole assembly and I just put it on my handlebars right here and then work from there. So we're gonna go on here, we're gonna slide like that. I better get around this brake and lever, huh? I'm just gonna start right there. That's a good place to start. So we'll take the whole carburetor, everything, it's all attached, nothing's loose because we put everything at optimum positions. The cables aren't all loose or anything like that. It's ready to mount on the bike. So before we mount this carburetor on, look down in here. Ours have a little O-ring in there. These slots can be problematic if this isn't pushed on all the way. So if you have a poor running, poor idle, wants to die, that kind of thing, uh, it's usually a leak, so a vacuum leak. That's the reason why a lot of times. So when you're putting this on here, Make sure that it's seated all the way into that, into that O-ring and then get it tight. I use a 10 millimeter nut driver to tighten it down carefully. Cause if you use a Phillips, you can't get enough pressure to torque on it. You gotta keep that O-ring tight. <laughs> it's hard. Then I switch to a ratchet. So I can get a little more, a little more even pressure on it. And just gently do it. Don't go crazy. Right thing. Feel it. See if it wants to move. That's a good starting point. Okay. So far we have our carburetor on there. It's snug tight so that our O-ring is up there nice and tight. We have our throttle cable attached nice and in the mid range we have, which means we have adjustment on the screw here. Sorry, make it so you can see. On this screw here, we have adjustment, okay? Then we also have lots of adjustment on here. Everything's all the way in, but our cable's tight. So we can adjust quite a bit. Next, let's focus on our clutch assembly, okay? So I took the bucking bar out and there's a ball bearing behind here and I greased everything up, okay? So let me, let me slide out and see if we can see, yep. Okay, you see that little ball bearing right in there? I don't wanna drop it on the floor. <laughs> but I put a bunch of grease in there, and this is the grease I use, just so you can see. So we'll go ahead and put our clutch cover back on. We're all ready to go. So remember your short bolts. Go on this, this one. And this guy right here, we have a longer one that goes here all the way through. The threads and nuts on the other side, remember that. So this top longer bolt, you can go ahead and put your washer, lock washer, and nut on there now. All right, now that all the bolts are tight here, it's a good time to go in and push on this and see See how it feels. Feels pretty good to me. Everything's nice. Awesome. So even though we do our best on every part, we try to inspect everything, some things are just gonna get through, okay? Uh, so that's why I tend to think of this as really not a plug and play kind of hobby. There's little things that you gotta pay attention to. And what I'm talking about is on this uh, clutch lever, they didn't get the slot cut all the way through for my cable to come through, okay? But I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Let's go. So I'm back at the trusty old vise, and I'm gonna drill right into here, okay? See, nice clear path with just a drill bit. See, you could be a machinist too. And you didn't even have to order the part and get a replacement from customer service. So pretty nice, huh? So word of caution here, it's got this little added sleeve on the cable. We need to pull that out and get rid of it because it won't fit in the lever. Put that back in. 
Okay, boom, that's how you want it, okay? So then we're gonna go back to our lever. See that? We're gonna put this like that. We're gonna run this this way. Okay, see the slot? Push in there like that. And then I'm gonna turn this a little bit so that it can't come out through here anymore. Let's go ahead and mount it on our handlebars. We'll just put it anywhere for right now. Then we're gonna run it on the right side of the bike. Because what we need to do is we have to run it through there, and then over to our clutch lever. So before we feed it through everything, we're gonna take this spring and put it over the covering of the cable. This protects it from the heat that the engine puts off. You can see how it's over there now. Now we'll feed it through this guide. Once it's seated down in there, and then you want your spring. Then we're simply just gonna feed it through the hole in the side of this lever. Pull the screw out enough, yeah, feed it through like that. Well, I tend to tighten the screw down with a large flat blade screwdriver and then pull on it with the cable with pliers. So first, I'm gonna pull on the cable. I'm gonna push the lever in pretty far because you're gonna have to do this a lot in the beginning to get it really adjusted. So I'm gonna put the pliers like, you can see how they're sideways. And I'm going to roll it while pulling it. And we're just going to start there. So as you can see, the lever, everything is screwed all the way in. So for adjustments, okay. Uh, this one is screwed all the way in. So you have adjustment. And we just started at where it sits against before it plunges, okay. Um, but if we go up here and we squeeze the lever, you'll see. we got a good start. You can see that we're making more progress on our Switz Cruise bicycle, and we're really getting everything set at a neutral position. If you notice, everything's been at a very neutral position with lots of adjustments, plus or minus, okay? So all of our cables have a lot of adjustment because I put them all the way in, but everything is seated, and it's, you know, what I would call starting point. We're not gonna know how the clutch is gonna react until we actually start riding and doing our test rides, okay? And then that's where we'll go in and really start fine and tune all that, fine tuning all that stuff. <laughs> now, to those of you who've made it to the end of this video, I wanted to give you a heads up that the Swiss Cruise Bicycle project that we're doing right now with this whole series, we're gonna give it away. So if you've seen this part, I want you to like, subscribe, I want you to invite some friends, but most importantly, I want you to comment below, hashtag build it right. Let's see if you can do that. And before you know it, you may win a Switz Cruise bike. Take care.